I'm super pleased to have on the line with me Aaron Bilbray, who is a Nevada DNC super delegate who was at, was at last weekend's convention. Aaron, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me on. Thanks for joining us today. Um, be, be, before we before we get into some of the issues of you know what what has happened here, um, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. How how did you become a super delegate? Where you know, and 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 uh, also, I wanted to get into the story of your father, and, and but that's uh, it's another thing. But uh, let's start out with Aaron. Sure. So um, I was born and raised in Nevada. I've been elected by my state party convention twice. So I've been a, a DNC National Committee woman for eight years. Um, extremely involved in the party. I created an organization called Emerge Nevada, which recruits and trains Democratic women. I was political director for our former AG for eight years, and I was a uh, the congressional nominee for a swing district last cycle, which unfortunately I lost, but have been very much involved um, in in Democratic politics in Nevada all of my life. Okay. So, and and you were uh, at the convention on, on Saturday, right, all day? I, I I was at the convention from five in the morning till it got shut down uh, about nine o'clock at night. Wow, wow, that's a long one. Now to start <laughs> to start at the beginning, I had a caller yesterday um, uh, who uh, from from Las Vegas actually, um, who basically said the whole thing. You know, the the starting point. Um, which is one of the one of the Sanders folks, and and by the way, uh, you have endo- uh, you are a supporter of Senator Sanders. Your father was a supporter of Hillary Clinton. Do I have that right? That is absolutely correct. And he's a former congressman as well as uh, presumably a superdelegate. He is no longer a superdelegate. He has been um, out of Congress since the nineties. Mm-hmm. Um, he was a superdelegate at one point, but he is he is a diehard Clinton supporter, as I am a diehard Bernie Sanders supporter. Okay. And um, so t- just to start at the beginning, um, this this was our caller from yesterday. Um, this is clip number one. Pardon? You don't know where it went? OK. Well, yesterday I had a caller who called in and said, you know, uh, the the call to order item number seven on the rules, which was posted on the website, says that the state convention shall be called to order at 9 a.m. on Saturday, May 14th. But then I look at page one of the rules, which is on the website, and it says registration shall be open no later than 7 a.m. and shall close at 10 a.m. on Saturday. Every delegate and alternate in line at 10 a.m. shall be registered. Delegates and alter- alternates shall have until 10 a.m. to register. Delegates and alternates who have pre-registered shall have until 10 a.m. for in-person registration. Um, any delegate or alternate who is not registered in person or is not in the in-person registration line by 10 a.m. shall be considered to have vacated his or her position. Uh, a, there seems to be a little bit of a difference between those two time things, and B, what what the heck happened? Well, and, and I, I believe that that was done intentionally. Um, the idea was in the rules that our current uh, chair, Roberta Lang, uh, it called for is that the temporary rules could be passed by 40% of a quorum, and they were very restrictive rules. So I think their plan was that they were going to get people in as quickly as they possibly could, and just kind of forced through these uh, very restrictive rules that called for no motions from the floor or no ability to debate. And uh, the Sanders people caught wind of this and were incredibly aggressive and got their people in the room by mm. 9 a.m. Uh, okay. And so, so when the rules were, uh, when she brought a motion for the rules to be passed by unanimous extent, uh, 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 there was a voice vote and those rules were obviously voted no. And if you, I don't know if you've seen any of the videotapes. I have. It. It's really, you know, it's really yeah. clear that the no's at it. And she just went ahead and said, the eyes So that was it. like the, and, the beginning of this process of, 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 you know, kind of, boy, we've been screwed. Is it, do I, do yeah. I have it? Now, tell me, tell me your father's response to all this, the, the diehard Hillary supporter. He was there also, right? Wow. He, he was there, too. Um, and, you know, there was a couple things that were going on because one of the things that one of the motions that we wanted to make, it, a lot of people are trying to this was not at this point really about Bernie Sanders delegates or Hillary Clinton delegates. Um, what this really was that we were arguing about was making sure that there was a role, a place in the future for all of these new first time Sanders supporters who really want to now participate in the party. 
And one of the motions that we wanted was um, an opportunity to get them elected to the executive board and the state central committee, which I know sounds really in the weeds, but that is a way for them to be able to participate. And Roberta Lang's new rules made that impossible for them to do. And so my dad had two comments. One, he thought that was the most ridiculous thing that he'd ever heard. Why wouldn't we want all these thousands of new voters to be able to participate in our party? Um, and he kind of even joked, and he was like, I don't think they should really be worried. He goes, they'll go to a couple of these meetings a few times and might not want to come back. Um, but he also was just outraged by, you know, not letting these rules go forward in a democratic process. And then the other thing was not being able to have a secret ballot anymore. Um, he felt was against um, all of our human rights treaties, uh, you know, that we have with other countries. You know, we say democracy is in the secret ballot. Right, right. Um, did he leave? He did. He tore up his ballot and left. Uh, in uh, in in protest of of what Roberta Lang and the and the kind of institutional Nevada DNC was doing. Yes, yeah. Wow. He just was like, wow. he's like, I'm too old for this. This is ridiculous. And yeah. Laugh. Now, um, meanwhile, I've got I've got a bunch of questions here. Um, the what first of all what's the net net of all this i i keep hearing debbie wasserman schultz here's De this is clip number two this is debbie wasserman schultz talking about violence and intimidation when i heard what happened at the nevada state democratic convention this weekend i was deeply disturbed regardless of any campaign or candidates frustration over process there should never be a but when it comes to condemning violence and in intimidation. Violence and intimidation are never acceptable under any circumstances. And what happened at that convention was unacceptable. So I've, I've heard this phrase, violence and intimidation, over and over and over again from Clinton surrogates. Was there violence and intimidation? As I told you, I was there from mm -hmm. 5 in the morning until late at night. I was also there with my husband, who's a pediatrician, and my two daughters, who are 10 and 14. There was a lot of cursing, which I don't condone, but there was a lot of anger. I never saw any violence. Now, there was someone that at the very end, when Roberta just decided to shut down the convention before it was over, mm -hmm. started to pick up a chair, and another Bernie supporter, and I, I saw this firsthand with my husband, another Bernie supporter said, hey, I, and I don't know what the rest of the conversation was, the guy put the chair down, and they ended up hugging it out. Right. I saw the video of that. That's, I saw yeah, the video of that. And I, I, and I posted on Twitter yesterday. I said, can anybody send me a picture of any, you know, because 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 Rachel has started her show a couple of days ago with throwing chairs, plural. And, and I said, can anybody even show, you know, what I, I, I have yet to see a picture of anybody throwing a chair at anybody or any kind of violence. No punches, no nothing. Um, Aaron, can you stick around for, for 10 or 15 minutes with us? Absolutely. Great. Uh, please hang on. We, we've we've got to take breaks here and. But this this will just be a real short one. We're talking with Aaron Bilbray, uh, a, a Democratic superdelegate and a member of the Nevada Democratic Party, and uh, and and more a, a, a national committee woman as well. We'll be right back. This is the Tom Hartman program. Stick around. We'll be back with uh, with more of Aaron Bilbray. Okay, Aaron, you're still here. I am. Great. Um, our uh, the people who are listening to us on commercial radio stations are listening to a commercial break right now. But on our Pacifica stations and on Free Speech TV, we're still live. We'll talk for four minutes during that break, and then I'll we'll go back to our commercial stations and join everybody, and I'll uh, just summarize whatever we talked about here. What what you know in your mind? What's the what's the take home from this meeting? <sighs> You know, the, the convention was ran very poorly, um, especially in, this, in a caucus state like Nevada, where you first had to go to the caucus and you had to spend hours on a Saturday to participate. And then people went to their county conventions and spent 15 hours 
at, at their county convention. And then they came back to the state convention and were told by their chair and their party that they had no voice. And that made people very angry. Yeah. And they should have had a voice. Um, so my takeaway is that if we are going to really move forward and unite this party, there needs to be outreach from the establishment, from the institutions that are there already to these new voters, or, or we're going to have a really big problem in the future. But it seems like the exact opposite is happening. It, it seems that the establishment figures, particularly in the in the, in the corporate media, you know, uh, MSNBC, CNN, I've seen this over and over again. Um, there's one per reporter in particular on CNN who keeps, you know, going back and talking about how violent everything was. And, and, and now there's these tapes being released of people calling uh, Roberta Lang and, and, you know, swearing at her and threatening her life and things like that, um, which, which is a whole nother conversation, I suppose. But, but uh, I, I don't hear anybody from the, quote, establishment saying, gee, maybe we should have done this differently. No, and I'm and, and again, you know, obviously, threatening someone's life um, or any threatening any type of violence is not acceptable, and that's certainly not what the Bernie Sanders uh, movement is about. But you're right; I, I think it's two different issues. Um, there's no discussion about how unfair the process was at at that state convention, because one of the other things that needs to be addressed is, according to Roberta Lang's own restrictive rules. Motions from the floor could be brought forward only if there was a signed petition of 20% of delegates, um, essentially by 9.30 in the morning. So pretty much an impossible feat. Mm -hmm. Will these Sanders millennial organizers did it? Mm -hmm. They got it done. And she refused to accept them. And what was the motion? There was there were several. One was that uh, the biggest ones were one was that uh, there would be an opportunity for everyone to be elected at the state convention to the state central committee. Mm-hmm. One was that there would be an opportunity for people to run for executive board. Um, there was one that said we would take motions from the floor. Basically, what they went is they went through the rules and everything that they objected to. Mm-hmm. They put motions together, and they went through a democratic process, put a lot of work into it. And then were denied and given no reason for being denied. And was that a denial just like, no, you can't? Or was it one of those uh, voice vote things where the uh, the nays have it? They would not even take it. They just said no. They just said no. They wouldn't no. even take it for a wow. Okay. Yeah. Am, I, am I pronouncing your last name correctly, by the way? Bill Bray. Bill Bray. Okay, great. <laughs> I've got I've got two different spellings here on my sheet. I just want to make sure. Uh, Aaron, Aaron, h- hang on just a second. We're going to rejoin our commercial stations right now. We'll be right back. Aaron Bilbray is with us. And welcome back. Uh, Aaron Bilbray is with us. She's a, a DNC Nevada a National Committee woman. Uh, uh, was at the event all day Saturday. Um, it's, I, I, you know, I, I've been trying to avoid dealing with this at great length on this program for two days, but it's just not gone away. So here we are. Um, Aaron, welcome back and thank you for hanging out with us. Um, we were just, just talking just a moment ago and you were telling, telling me how this uh, uh, young group of Sanders supporters, how, how uh, the chair, Roberta Lang, had set a rule that if you want to have anything considered, um, uh, motions considered from the floor, they have to be in writing and they have to be submitted by 930 in the morning, which seems impossible. But um, with 20 percent of the delegates having to sign it and have 20 percent of the delegates there sign it. OK. And what happened? Yeah. So that's where it makes it really impossible. Right. Right. Um, they, they did it. They got it. They got 10 of these petitions with the necessary signatures and she refused to accept their petition. Yeah. And. The first time when uh, it was a young woman by the name of Angie Morelli got up with her petitions, uh, they claimed afterwards that they couldn't hear her. And so then she came back with a bullhorn, and then they said it's against the rules to have bullhorns, and they took her bullhorn away. Wow. And these were, and, the, and, mean, the, and what these young people, these, these young Bernie supporters who are, many of them, this is their first experience with politics, what they were asking for is the ability to run for 
to become candidates to run for positions like yours, like a uh, like a committee person, uh, you know, to 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 be members of the Democratic Party. Do I have that right? Yes, yes, exactly. And exactly. they were told, no, we're not going to even allow you to we're not going to even follow our own rules that we set up. Is that correct? That's correct. OK, that is correct. And they, now, still with this position, positions, they would have still had to get two thirds of the uh, of the room vote. But right. they wouldn't even let them have the vote. Wow. And they probably wouldn't have gotten two thirds if the room was 50 50 Hillary Bernie. And, and so, again, why is Roberta Lang doing this when she probably would have won anyway? And why, for that matter, is the Hillary campaign supportive of this when they would have won anyway? They're winning anyway. Why, they're going to need these folks, you know, to win in the general. I don't understand it. I didn't understand it either, um, and honestly, there were a lot of Hillary people in that room that didn't understand it. Yeah, they didn't. You know, now, they. I'm sorry. I wanted these kids to be involved. Yeah, um, Barbara Boxer has been on TV a, a lot this morning. She was. She's been on CNN a couple times, or maybe it's been repeated a few times. I, I have it on here. The sound off. Um, and but I yesterday I saw a number of times, uh, particularly on MSNBC, uh, her being booed. But I had never actually heard what she had to say other than, hey, if you're booing me, you're booing Bernie. Um, I've got uh, just a quick 27 second clip. It, it's actually out of a 45 second one. There's a, a little piece in the middle where it just kind of, you know, where it, it just wandered into crowd noise that we clipped out. So this is a, a slightly edited piece, but I don't think it's the editing has uh, diminished the context here. Here is and, and and she's speaking to a group of. Roughly half Bernie supporters, half Hillary supporters. Uh, here's Barbara Boxer at the at the convention. So, uh, you know, we, we missed actually a, a lot of what she said there, but three different times she said, you know, I'm for Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton's going to win. Um, you know, basically it's over. Uh, that doesn't seem like a message of reconciliation to me. No. And uh, to be perfectly honest, I'm not asking I'm, you I'm to not... criticize Barbara Boxer. I, I don't want to no, put you in that position. But no, no, and, I, and I'm a big fan of hers. Me too. I, what I honestly, what I honestly thought was the problem is I have no idea again why the Nevada State Democratic Party staff put her out there at that moment in time. Right. I mean, they put her right out in, in when people were furious because they couldn't get their, you know, get their voice heard, and right. so I don't even know that it was. I mean, and probably some of the things that she said just made them even more angry but well saying three times in a row that hillary is hillary, i'm i'm here to support hillary clinton hillary clinton's going to win um you know she, you know that that when when you're in the middle of the process of deciding who you're going to vote for right, it's, right. it seems anyway I, I i don't want to turn this into going off on barbara i just I, I or on senator boxer but i but i thought that the way that the press has handled this has been just totally weird well, and here's the other part of this story is that I talked to uh, Nina Turner yesterday, mm -hmm. and she was originally supposed to go on before Barbara Boxer. Uh -huh. And for whatever reason, staff changed it at the last minute. And Nina would have been a much better person to put out there when when everyone was so angry. Yeah, to kind of calm, uh, the, calm the flames. Well, she ultimately did, and she's going to be on our program in a few minutes. But uh, Aaron, it, it has been a pleasure. Uh, talking with you, getting to know you here. I, I hope we can do this again. Aaron, thanks so much for being with us today. To watch more clips from our programs, hit the Watch More Videos button over here. And please be sure to hit the handy-dandy subscribe button so you'll always be up to date. Tag, you're it.